This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, NIL Game Changers, and Sunbury Motor Company. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And we welcome everyone to the show today. Dennis Dodd, later, later in the show. Get into a couple of the issues out there with him. Tim Kirchin tomorrow. So I want to start this uh, half hour, by the way, brought to you by NIL Game Changers. The ultimate destination for name, image, and likeness opportunities for both athletes and businesses. Start your journey today at NILGameChangers.org. So let's start with this. And Brad sent me this tweet yesterday. So, as you know, I'm so active on Twitter. (laughs) Um, And let's see. Where's where's what Brad sent me here? And this was a tweet. Here we go. Um, That was put out. New college football playoff executive director Rich Clark on the selection committee picking the first round home teams. Weather, hotel availability, ticket sales. My response is simple. You just started the job. You need to resign. I mean, really. You need to resign. If that is what you're saying needs to be uh, the cri- the criteria. Are you kidding me? You're kidding me. Does that mean that's going to be figured into the seeds beforehand, or is a that, is a lower seed going or a lower seed going to have to be an away team? You can't do this. You cannot do it. You earn your seed. Hey, okay? you earn your seed. You are not gifted your seed. You earn it. Now, people are wondering. Um. See what we got here. Clark was asked about preparations and precautions that will be taken when getting to host sites ready with just a two week turnaround from the end of the college football season. He wants each venue with the best possible condition for the flood of visitors to come. Well, first of all, all right. There are a lot of factors that go into this, Clark said when asked about prepping host sites. Weather is going to be a factor that they're going to have to consider because this game is going to be later in the year in the winter. Hotels are a factor. Do they have the hotel level of hotels that you would expect for a playoff game? Or do they have the availability when we need it? Practice space, those kinds of things that people need to keep in mind. What the heck is he talking about? Isn't that part of the home field advantage? First of all, <laughs> you're going to be doing almost all your practices at home. I'm going to be practicing at the site all week. And for goodness sakes, who's going to do that? That's ridiculous. This this is this is an embarrassment. This is an embarrassment right out of the gate. First of all, the teams that are going to make this already are going to be major college football teams. 
So they have towns already with hotels. They already have ticket sales. And as for the weather, hey, LSU's 93, Penn State's 11 and 1, Penn State's the 5 seed, LSU's the 12 seed. Guess what? The game is not going to be in Baton Rouge. They can come up here and they can freeze their backsides off. Could have just been a warning to the group of five teams that you're not getting a home game. Yeah, but the group of five team, you know. <laughs> group of five team, um, is it possible to be in the top eight? Sure. Do I think they're going to be in the top eight? Nine times out of ten, no. Um, I'm wondering, I'll tell you where I think this comes into play here. If it's eight versus nine, then you can question the shenanigans here of weather. But if it's five versus 12, six versus 11, no. Seven versus ten, uh, it's dicey. Eight versus nine, now you're starting to play a game here. I, I don't I don't understand what he's talking about here. I don't get it. I mean, first of all, what, Penn State? Hey. Number of hotels? What do you think? Tuscaloosa's overloaded with hotels? I've been to Tuscaloosa. I mean, what the heck? I've been to Austin. I've been to USC. I've been to Notre Dame. Notre Dame hotels. Yeah, hotels. It's um. I, I, it also sounds like they think that they're gonna. These teams are gonna treat it like a bowl game, and then as soon as they find out their game, maybe two days later, they're gonna go to the town and hang out for a week. And that's, that's not gonna not, No, that's not gonna happen. They're gonna fly in the night before. I mean. <laughs> Like you do for any road game. The heck? You know, maybe maybe you fly in. Okay, say the game is Saturday, Saturday the twenty first of December, and maybe you get there on Thursday. Forty eight hours ahead of time, so you have press conference, the whole deal. What do you but, need on that Friday anyway to practice, other than some place to do a walkthrough? Uh, yeah, uh, in other words, yeah, you'd be walking through the stadium. You know. But to be honest with you, Penn State goes on the road, they never do a walkthrough in the stadium. Now, for a bowl game, yeah. But, like, for example, the Rose Bowl? The Rose Bowl, they just walked around the stadium and then they went to a high school and practiced the day before. That's what they did. They went over to the Rose Bowl. They had media day over at the Rose Bowl. I think the day they had the last the last time they went to the Rose Bowl. Let's see, uh, let's see. The last two times, one time they walked around, and then they went to a high school and they did the Friday practice. Okay. The last time, it was raining the day of media day. Um. And they went, but they were still planning on going to a high school anyway. And then they did their Fast Friday practice in the ballroom, <laughs> like, and won the game. I mean, the Fiesta Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, all the practices were at high school. Right? They didn't actually go to the stadium until the day of the game. The Cotton Bowl, they did practice in Jerry World the day before the game. The Orange Bowl, they did practice in there the night before the game. Most other places, and let's see, the Alamo Bowl, they did a walk through the day before. The Pinstripe Bowl, they did a practice the day before. The Gator Bowl. The Gator Bowl, no. The Gator Bowl, they did not. Um... 
See, this is what helps having experience with these things. <laughs> I can answer these questions. Uh, so it's a mixed bag, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, Penn State plays a non-conference game at Auburn. They showed up Friday night, and the first time they saw the stadium, and they stayed an hour away in Montgomery, and the first time they saw the stadium was the day of the game. Okay, we're done. Now, the NCAA basketball tournament, let's take that as an example. Because I, I always feel that's a fair example. It's a national championship tournament. And you have to be there 48 hours before. So Penn State, uh, last time they played was Thursday. So they had to be there Tuesday. And Penn State practiced at a high school, Johnson High School, in Des Moines. And then went back to the hotel. The next day was the day it was mandatory that they meet the media and do a one-hour open practice. And so what they did was they did the meat and potatoes of the practice at Drake on their floor and then went over to the open practice, did the one-hour shoot-around, and had the press conference. And then the next day they played Texas A&M, beat them, and then Friday was you know, is always closed. There's a press conference, but the practice is closed in the arena. And in fact, they, in fact, they went over to Johnson High School for that, too. They, they did do some work, and they did do some work in the arena, but they also did work over at Johnson. So, you know, in, in most spots, a football stadium is a football stadium. It's just a difference between grass and turf for the most part. Yeah, it's just like looking around, going, "Okay, been there." Um. Yeah. Uh, so, do they even put the big crowns on the fields anymore? No. No, that doesn't. No. Before Southern put their turf in, if you stood on the visitors' sidelines, you couldn't see the feet of the home team. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that's how big the crown was. Well, there. yeah, you know what the crown that you know what Giants stay the old Giants Stadium? The old Giants Stadium had a big crown on it. <laughs> uh MetLife does not. Uh, so uh Richard Clark. Lieutenant General Richard Clark brings leadership diplomacy skills to college football playoff as it expands and evolves. Well, guess what? He just set the whole thing back with the comments. This is what I'm going to talk to Dennis about. Like, well, what the heck's he talking about? Weather needs to figure in? Hey, tough. You need to win more games. You want to host? Win more games. <laughs> this is not the Southern, this is not the SEC invitational. That's wrong. Do they know that? Hey, look, the best teams, based on the criteria, are the ones that host. The best teams are the ones that get the buys. The next four teams with the best resumes host. And the last four teams get to be in the tournament with a chance to advance. Pretty simple. Can't make it more okay. I mean, every all these places, for example, all right, let's talk about uh ticket sales. Ticket sales. Say, for example, it works out that Penn State's a nine seed and Oregon's an eight seed. Okay? Well, where are you gonna get more ticket sales? You're gonna get twice as many at Penn State. Right? Or Michigan's the nine seed and Oregon's the eight seed. You're going to have twice as many tickets at Michigan than Oregon. What, you pick Michigan to be the eight, even though Oregon earned the eight? I mean, that's what this guy's saying. Or is it even the even worse picture where number eight travels to number nine? Well, that's... Well, that can't happen. 
If you're eight, I'm selling tickets. Like and said, we're not traveling. We're not getting on a plane, or we're not playing. If we're the eight, okay, and they say, well, yeah, but we're going to have to play the game there. No, we are not. We're not getting on the plane. And believe me, there isn't anybody out there that's going to say, hey, excuse me, <laughs> right? you're wrong. <laughs> Guess what? This is, if you want to be a leader, and evidently he's had leadership positions in his life. You don't do that. You just look at everybody and go, what are the factors? Factors are pretty simple. Okay? You're the eight seed, the seven seed, the six seed, the five seed, you're hosting. It's a pretty simple process. Now, how we get to five through eight, that'll be difficult. But, but, you don't put that in there. By saying that, without playing a game, without playing a game in this thing, he's done damage. That's hard to do. Still might not be the dumbest thing somebody in college football said this week. Did you see what Mike uh, Gundy said about Ollie Gordon? Oh, yeah, that wasn't... Yeah, that made no sense. <laughs> I do it all the time. Yeah, Isn't this the same guy who said, I'm a man? Yes. Like, okay, I'm it. 40. Well, guess, yeah, I'm 40. <laughs> well, guess what? Yeah. You're, that's not evidence of it. No. Yikes. Every every Big Ten coach needs to make a big stink about this. And every Big 12 coach needs to be, make a big stink out of this. Again, you earn your spot. Now, we can debate whatever, but don't you ever say weather plays a role. Uh, guess what? Okay, Tua Tunga Viola, who grew up in Hawaii who played at Alabama, is now the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, had to play in below-zero conditions at Kansas City in the playoffs because the Chiefs earned home field. Hmm. Florida Panthers earned home ice. The Boston Celtics earned home court. Hey, who cares what the weather is? Hotels? This place accommodates 110,000 people. There are enough hotels. I mean, do they need more? Sure, but there are enough hotels to make it work, right? That's right. How much travel are you going to get with what you get two weeks' notice? It's the yeah. week before Christmas. Yeah. I mean, I. I mean, I know some fans are hardcore and they'll get some people, but I don't, I don't know if they're going to be getting as many as they think that they're going to be filling well, the, up all the, the hotel rooms. Right. Well, the, I mean, the key is, the key is just, for, I don't know what the, well, when they have not explained, what's the ticket allotment for the visiting team? Because normally in the Big Ten, it's about 4000 So what's the ticket allotment for the visiting team for the playoff? It doesn't matter. I could care less. I mean, there are hotels all over the place. You can stay in Altoona. It's 40 miles. Get an Uber. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I mean, do you want to know where we've stayed over the years? I mean, Auburn stayed in Montgomery an hour away. Okay? Notre Dame several times we stayed in Michigan City an hour away. I mean, this is as a team. Now, these are choices that Penn State makes. That's fine. I mean, they've stayed all over the place over the years, different places. 
you know, played in Tuscaloosa. Guess what? T- stayed in Tuscaloosa once. The other times they stayed in Bessemer and Birmingham. Okay. It's fine. Tuscaloosa's not overloaded with hotels, you know. <laughs> like ho- hotel availability, ticket sales. Something tell the ticket sales for anybody making the playoffs pretty strong. Maybe you're right. Maybe this is a message to the group of five you're never going to host. You might be right about that. But this made no sense. And I call them out. Hey, guess what? You blew it. That's not how a playoff works. And believe me, if LSU's playing at Penn State and there's a swirl of snow out there and it's 25 degrees, the ratings are going to go up. (laughs) That's really cool. It's football. All right, that's football. Look at the swirl of snow. Look at LSU. Hey, let's see. They're going to freeze to death. Hey, that's the way it goes. (laughs) Right? Yeah, and... and... I, I you know the way it sounds. I just I just find it hard to believe that they're going to pull home games from the Big Ten right. teams because it's cold. Don't, right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Don't portray this even subtly as the SEC Invitational. No. You do that, this whole thing goes awry. I just think it was the wrong statement at the wrong time by the wrong guy. Okay. He's supposed to be. He showed great diplomacy over the years. Where was it in that statement? <laughs> Maybe he's out of practice. Hey, you're not talking to Soltenberg over at NATO. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're not doing that anymore, sport. <laughs> you're talking to college football fans now. Okay. Guess what? You're the five seed you're hosting. There's something to be said about a sale with a handshake, a service technician who really knows what he's doing. They can explain it in English what the problem is. There's nothing better than having that friend you could trust in the area. That's Sunbury Motors, where you get selection, knowledgeable salespeople, and prices that fit your budget, and more important, that friend you can trust. Welcome to Sunbury Motors, Kia, Ford, and Hyundai. You could shop other dealers and compare prices, but at Sunbury Motors, you get their lowest price promise. They research the current used vehicle market and guarantee their used car prices are the lowest. If you find a lower price, Sunbury Motors will beat it. Three dealers, all in one. See their full new and pre-owned inventory at sunburymotors.com. Pick out a vehicle you like and schedule your test drive online. Follow them on Facebook. Sunbury Motors Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. You want a unique way to display your brand. You need a team of seasoned experts to work with. You want to reach customers who buy. You want NIL Game Changers, a versatile consulting agency powered by former student athletes and coaches who work as NIL sports agents. NIL Game Changers will help you build powerful relationships with customers through compelling stories with student athlete influencers as your leading edge. Finally, we'll equip you with the right media to drive your success home. NILGameChangers.org, building meaningful relationships with your customers. Bringing you an in depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. All right, this half hour brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Auto home life business, boat, motorcycle, RV. And you have multiple insurance needs, and they handle them all. Great pros, great people. Customer service means everything in the Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament, less than four weeks away. August 7th, Susquehanna Valley Country Club to benefit the greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. All right. All that coming up. You know, your point, though, Todd, uh, about that being 
a torpedo to starboard to the group of five, I think has some validity to it. So maybe there's some context to it. In other words, Appalachian State, the idea of them hosting in Boone, North Carolina, with a twenty-five to 30,000-seat stadium, as opposed to LSU in Baton Rouge. So maybe that is something um, that maybe that's the context of what he's saying. Though I, now I'd love to see everybody trying to get in, into New, into Boone, Carolina, at least North Carolina, at least once. North University of North Carolina went and played there. And first of all, they're tough enough without going there. Yeah. They played three times. One of them was there. They lost. Um, and I don't know. That you may be right. That may have been the the point of. Hey, Coastal Carolina is ranked eighth. We're not going to Myrtle Beach. There are enough hotels at Myrtle Beach. The weather's great at Myrtle Beach, but the last part about ticket sales? No. You might get some travel on December 21st, though, from the North teams down to Myrtle Beach. Oh, no question, but they don't have the stadium size. So that that may be, okay, that may be part of what he's saying there, especially the ticket sales part of it. Um, weather, hotels, um, well, suddenly out of nowhere, Bowling Green is having the season of all seasons, right? They're twelve and zero, and they're ranked. Eighth, the game is not being played in Bowling Green, Ohio. And I have done a game at Bowling Green, Ohio. Basketball. Yeah, so maybe that's what he's saying. That would be weather, ticket sales. <laughs> There'd be a bunch of them. Um, um, <laughs> so they wouldn't qualify on weather they wouldn't qualify on ticket sales and they wouldn't qualify on hotels so they would be over for 3 <laughs> so maybe that's it and i'm going to i'm going to assume that the that, that they're assuming that the bowling green fans won't travel as well as say the penn state fans will it would be much easier to get 100,000 Penn State fans and 10,000 Bowling Green fans than try and fit everybody from Penn State right. that would want to go to that Bowling right. Green game. So, so you may be right. This might be a group of five comment. I, you know, For example, Autzen Stadium, where Oregon plays. Let's just take Oregon. Okay? Okay? I mean, Autzen Stadium is not one of the bigger stadiums in the country. And Autzen Stadium has 54,000. That's it. They have 54,000 seats. Now, can they get standing room to 60,000? Yes. But... Um, it's it's a 54,000-seat stadium. I mean, it's not Hayward Field where they used to play, but still. I wonder what they're going to do student-wise, because most schools are, are done by then. There's not going to be many students around for these oh, games I either. Don't, yeah, that's that's a really good question about that. Um, 
I think it just I think this becomes an open seating deal. Yeah. I mean, you I think season ticket holders will have right of first refusal on their tickets. And I would give the students the right of first refusal on their season tickets. And but you have to be a student to use it. In other words, you can't have a right of first refusal. Hey, you know, these are my tickets and all of a sudden, you know, 60-year-old guy shows up to sit in the student section. You no. Know? Don't think so. Trying to pull it off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, in other words, how does the suit get into most games? Pretending to be Daniel. All right. I mean, it's the same thing when it, when it comes time to, to order plates at, at, at the restaurant. I mean, suit's always looking at the kitty menu and like, you know, <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> I hope not still. Daniel's Daniel's in his 20s now. <laughs> Yeah, but he's still trying to. Okay. Uh, just so you know. So, the whole thing's bad. Uh, but you see what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, I would give them right of first refusal, but you have X date to say yes or no to it. And if it's a student seat and it's yes or no, boom, the no's then become automatic open seating for anybody who can buy the ticket. And season ticket holders should always have right of first refusal on tickets. They've already made the investment. So, yeah, but like I said, uh, what about Northwestern? Here's one for you, Northwestern. Say Northwestern has a phenomenal season in 2028, all right? And Ryan Field is now built. It's 35,000 seats. Now, to me, you earn it, you earn it. I don't care. I, I don't care about the size of the venue. I really don't. I mean, Evanston, they've got plenty of hotels in Chicago. That's fine. Weather, lousy. And stadium size, 35,000. What, they should never be allowed to host if they're having a great season? Come on, it's a playoff. And... <clears throat> If one of those SEC, uh, well, I don't know if there's any, well, Vanderbilt and places like that, but if, you know, if a smaller Big Ten or a smaller Big SEC stadium earns a home game, I can only imagine the uproar if they would take it away from them. So I, that's why I kind of lean to the group of five thing. Yeah, it's probably more of a group of five comment. I mean, well, okay, let's, I'll, I'll give you another one. Let's, let's go to the SEC. Okay. And let's go to Ole Miss, Vaught Hemingway Stadium. All right. I mean, they seat 64,000. It's not, you know, it's not, you know. I mean, I've, I've, I've been there. Okay. I mean, they've expanded it a little bit over the years. Just fine. But. Yeah, that's not a huge stadium. This is a nice. By the way, it's a nice stadium. I think it's really nice. But you know, I think he. I think that comment on ticket sales. Jeez, I mean, Boone, North Carolina is like twenty five thousand. I don't. Mean, what the heck does Liberty Stadium see? Let's take Liberty since they were in the playoff last year. They opened the season, by the way, with Campbell. Very impressive. Oh, really? Let's see. Go Camels. Way to go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Football tickets. Dude, your place is not big at all. Holy mackerel. But... Their luxury indoor club is sold out. Their club seats are sold out. Their cabana seats are sold out. And their premium member seats are sold out. Hmm. Very impressive. Um, how big is the stadium? I don't even know what the name of the stadium is. Policies, more information. Okay, digital tickets, don't care, don't care. Frequently asked questions for football. It's Williams Stadium. Okay. So, Williams Stadium is the name of the place. And, oh. There's one thing, the, the weather's better at Liberty. 
right? So the weather's not the issue. So, let's see. William Stadium at Liberty. Didn't look very big. William Stadium. Okay. 25,000 seats. I think that, see, I think, for example, say Liberty's having a great year. Right? They don't qualify under, under the ticket part of it. That 25,000 seats. So. But I don't, to be honest with you, there should not be any criteria for this. You earn whatever your ranking is. And if it turns out that Appalachian State is tremendous and having an incredible year and they're a seven seed, they have earned their right to host. Right? Hey, I I agree completely. I I, I just I don't see, I don't see why he felt he had to say something like this. I'm completely baffled by it. I, and you know I wonder if this wasn't brought up before everybody agreed w- with this for a reason as well. So you know when they agreed to do the the, the 12 team playoff, I bet it wasn't mentioned that ticket sales and things like that would come into who was going to host these said right. playoff games. And what does it matter about ticket sales? You're going to get ticket sales out the Yazoo for this thing. Right? You're going to tell me the first ever playoff game at Pick Stadium. Rice Eccles Stadium. Rice Eccles Stadium, by the way, is not very big either. Utah? It's not a huge stadium. Right? But Rice Eccles Stadium, first ever playoff game. You don't think this is not going to be sold out? I think they're the first ever playoff game at Beaver Stadium. You're going to be here in droves. In droves. What, Ohio State ends up being a six seed? You're telling me that the shoe is not going to be sold out? Really? I'll tell you where they actually might struggle to sell out. A couple places. One of them's Clemson. Like, how can you say that? You know when Clemson won its last national championship? When Clemson won its last national championship, they did not sell out a single home game. Great article in The Athletic about ticket sales. And I remember they were asking about the interest, and it was and part of that article was... Um, they went, and they didn't just go to one place. It included going to the Penn State Ohio State game in Columbus. And I remember saying to Jack Ham that day when I looked at the South End Zone, I said, "Man, there's some empty seats in here." And it turned out that whomever the reporter was, and I apologize for not remembering the report because the reporter did great work, great work, and that's why I feel badly I'm not about not saying uh, the name of the individual. But one of the reasons why Ohio State was not sold out when she interviewed the fans is because Michigan wasn't on the home schedule. So that's even a dramatic statement. In other words, because Michigan's not there, they still sell a lot of tickets, a ton of them. But... The putting the number over the top as to having seven sellouts would have been having Michigan on there. And that that was part of the interview. In the interview, that was the reason given over and over and over again by people as to why the place, why, you know, and, Ohio, and uh, look, and Ohio State had great numbers, the whole thing, but they weren't sold out. They, in the Penn State game, was not sold out. Now, was, was it a, a few hundred to maybe a thousand tickets shy of a sellout? Yeah. But because Michigan was not on the schedule, they didn't sell as many season tickets. Hmm. And then Clemson, their 2017, was it 2017 the last time they won the national title? Does that make sense? That sounds right. Yeah. Not one sellout in seven home games. 
They had huge crowds, but no sellouts. I mean, this went into a lot because they were talking, you know, it, it dovetails with the article about students, student tickets and no-shows. And that was a separate article. I remember, for example, Georgia. Now, this is Georgia. Okay, again, what these articles do is they, they're myth busters. Oh, Georgia, I mean, they just pack them in no matter what. You want to know what their student no-show rate happens to be? 27%. Twenty-seven percent was a great article. The worst two places were Arizona and Arizona State, where the um, no-show rate was like forty-seven, forty-eight percent for students. In other words, they bought the tickets; they just didn't go. But Georgia was twenty-seven percent. I'm like, yikes! Twenty-seven percent there. What is what is it like at Vanderbilt? Fifty to sixty, depending on the. I would say it right. gets to that point right. at the end of the year when they when they're Vanderbilting. Right. I mean, I mean, but these are. That's why you, it's always good to take time to do a lot of reading and getting ready to do the show, so you can bring up stuff where people sit back and go, "You've got to be kidding me, really?" Because that was my reaction when I read it. You got to be kidding me, really? It is nicer in Arizona than it is than the football team plays usually too. So I get that yeah. part of it. <laughs> it's commentary like that that separates you. From us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. There's a bunch of good, especially at that. Especially the later the year gets. Man, I've done a lot of basketball games in December in Arizona, and I've done a bowl game in Arizona, too. It's nice. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Fiesta Bowl, we stayed, at the, we stayed at a resort in Scottsdale, which had a golf course. You're like, going, all right. And then we went over to TPC Scottsdale, like, hey. <laughs> all right. Hey, we're going to do a game, too. Okay. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was really nice, by the way, every day. All right. We'll come back. More in a moment. Great to have you with us today. Brought to you by Purdy Insurance on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection. Imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet Reagan Street Sunbury wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage. Hi, this is Season. For over 100 years, the Purdy Insurance Agency has been protecting families and businesses of the greater Susquehanna Valley and beyond. With the experience of our trained and knowledgeable staff, you can rest assured that your needs will be evaluated and met by some of the industry's best representatives. No matter what your insurance needs are, call Purdy Insurance today at 570-286-5855. Visit our website at purdyinsurance.com or check us out on Facebook to see what we can do for you. 